Okay, I'm talking to Chris uh, Judici um, in Gothenburg, and we've been talking quite a bit about Western esotericism, mm -hmm. and we've used that term quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see the study and the discipline of Western esotericism as a kind of area of study going in the future? Where is it kind of at? Okay, um, where is I, I think the, the the major direction, the the major shift that uh, we're witnessing, like right now mm -hmm. uh, within the field of Western esotericism, is a movement towards um, other disciplines under the wider umbrella of religious mm. studies, a um, uh, multidisciplinary uh, approach mm. to the subject matter, uh, which is something that was probably lacking uh, in, in the past. And um, it's actually interesting to uh, see various uh, new publications and, and, and PhD theses coming out. Uh, with this mm. uh, new new approach, and so I think that it's it's a process. I think also of uh, trying to get Western esotericism to be considered a legitimate area of inquiry. Right. Uh, not that it isn't, I wouldn't be doing it, but uh, sure. <laughs> but uh, it has uh, suffered maybe of this isolation from the rest of the... So in the discipline state of religious studies? Religious studies, There's kind exactly. of big subjects that people kind of know, Buddhist studies, Islamic studies. Yeah. Western hysteroticism sits on the borders and margins it of that really It really is. It really, it really is on the margins of lots and lots of other subjects. That's, yeah. that, that's exactly what Western hysteroticism is. I mean, it's like the other. It's yeah. what hasn't been contemplated by um, by major mm. major religious studies. So it's I think it's it's quite important because when if and when Western esotericism does become uh, an integral part of religious studies, then um, minor uh, aspects of um, bigger topics will be covered uh, in more detail. Right. Um, I don't know, uh, Christian mysticism, for example, mm. and uh, um, theosophy, mm. and people like Jakob mm. Berme, and, uh, um, or uh, Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah. Um, uh, there's, you know, there's, a, there's a wealth of, of, uh, of books and works that have been written through the ages, uh, which uh, could probably contribute uh, positively if studied yeah, but um, I'm sure yeah. you're you're right. In a sense, until quite recently, it was completely possible to go and get a degree in religious studies without ever studying Western Esotericism. Absolutely, you go and do your courses on Islamic studies. You do courses on Absolutely. history of early Christianity, and then you graduate graduate without any kind of knowledge of Western Esotericism at all. And yet, that's almost ironic because a hundred years ago, more or less, religious studies was in the same position. There was Absolutely. theology, Absolutely. there yeah. was theology, there was indology, there were all Absolutely. these various areas, but there was no discipline of religious studies. So that's the discipline itself that's had to emerge over, arguably, Absolutely. So 50, 200 Absolutely. years. Absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I think that on a smaller scale, that's exactly what's yeah. happening. You know, it's, uh, um, it has taken years and years of uh, painstaking work from, like, previous academics mm. to, to actually um, uh, be impartial and have an ethic approach to the subject matter and actually make Western esotericism a, a viable option of study. Mm. And uh, I think that like junior scholars like myself are now reaping the benefits of like yeah. of, of all this work that has been done in the past. And um, studying Western esotericism in a religious studies department mm -hmm. really does broaden the scope of yeah. your research. Um, uh, my MA was in Western esotericism, and that yeah. was very specific. Right. It was it really really focused on the history of esotericism yeah. in Europe um, from the Renaissance to the twentieth century, and uh, so I really didn't have a background in a wider background in religious studies before I started my PhD here, yeah. and uh, it really is it really opens your mind to. A wealth of ideas, uh, which uh, which you can I incorporate in your study. There's been there's been a, um, a, at least fifty years of work on methods and approaches in religious studies as a dis discipline. Mm -hmm. So that's allows people to kind of look at things in a very kind of this discipline itself integrates yeah. the study of philosophy and yeah. religious studies. Initially, has moved on a long way from just describing what people did yeah, in sure. churches that were sure. different to theirs. Sure. 
Um, and it actually is more philosophical, uh, more anthropological perhaps than sure, it ever was. Sure. More sociological perhaps than it's ever been. That seems to be a kind of real direction. Sure, sure. And so I suppose for someone studying Western esotericism, those approaches and the period of time people have taken to reflect on how do you do that while having a commitment but also putting that to one side, and the actual complexities around that are probably useful. Yeah, they, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 it really does make you appreciate your small subject matter mm. uh, much more when you reflect on the wider uh, the wider range mm. of uh, implications and yeah. uh, the wider range of fields that your research can touch upon if you want yeah. it you know and uh, it's really going back to where is Western esotericism going yeah. now um, I think that I, I think that is the, mm -hmm. the 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 most uh, significant uh, step that Western esotericism is taking. It's uh, kind of um, becoming uh, a, a legitimate field, you know, in, in the eyes of outsiders and uh, uh, other uh, fields. So within, within mainstream, within mainstream academia, within mainstream academia yeah, sure. So we can expect within religious studies conferences and other conferences and journals to see much more, and hopefully, I mean, it'll add very much to the field, like, to see much more esoteric. I think material. it's I think it's happening like yeah. exponentially every year. Right. So um, co conferences like the EA EASR and yeah. which deal with religion in general or uh, uh, Chesnor, uh, the yeah. New Religious Movements and everything. Um, it, there's an exponential increase in papers which deal with uh, the esoteric dimension of of religion and. Um, it's. I think it's just going to increase uh, more and more because it's such a huge field and it's been neglected for such a long time that there is an infinity of topics that haven't yeah. been picked yet. There's a lot and of work that, to do. There's a lot of work to do. Yeah, there's absolutely a lot of work to do. But I should keep you busy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.